Hi, I'm Josh Robertson, FSR for Bear Crop Science. And I'm Zach Webb, Technical Agronomist. We would like to welcome you today to the 2020 version of the Delta Pine Virtual Field Day. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you can learn a little bit about what's going to help make your cotton farm successful going forward into next year. Zach, the legacy of, De of Delta Pine has been around for a long, long time, even longer than you have in the cotton industry. And guys know you've been around a long time. But the legacy of Delta Pine is strong. It's been around a long time. Tell us a little bit about the history of Delta Pine. You know, it's pretty interesting, Josh. You know, back in 1915, that's 105 years ago, a guy named Early C. Ewing Sr. started breeding cotton for Delta and Pineland Company in Scott, Mississippi. He started a research program to start bringing better varieties for our cotton growers. And a lot of folks don't realize this, but in 1937, Fortune Magazine did a huge article on Delta and Pineland Company. So, you know, a lot of time has passed since then. We've seen a lot of, the last 25 years of my career, we've seen a lot of new traits launched, new technologies launched, and just the increase in the, the yield and the fiber quality of the germplasm that we're dealing with, the elite germplasm we bring to the market today is just phenomenal. The, the a really interesting piece of it to me is you said it all started down there in Scott, Mississippi. Jay Mahaffey still got testing going on right there in Scott, Mississippi, where, right where it all began. Uh, those guys are doing a lot of really good work, PGR work, population trials, corn, beans, cotton, everything right down there at the Scott Learning Center in Scott, Mississippi. Yeah, Jay, Jay gets to do things that he gets to think outside the circle a lot. So yeah. he gets to do a lot of fun things and creative things. And Jay does an amazing job down there. And he's a great source of information for us. Some really interesting work coming that he's working on on the effects of PGR management on quality, yield, and so forth. That'll be really interesting Absolutely. to see how it goes. Speaking of the legacy of Delta Pine Cotton Zach, 1646. I think that that number in itself has created its own legacy. If it was a basketball player, I think he'd have his his jersey retired by now. Don't you agree? I, I agree, Josh. When I, when I hear those four numbers, I, I smile pretty big because you know we're talking about a cotton variety here that has really set the bar uh, for the cotton industry. Um, it set the bar on not only on yield, versatility, but on fiber quality, and it's bringing a lot of things to the table for our growers. You mentioned. Delta Pine Select, I think while ago we were talking, and it's a variety that's been used in Delta Pine Select to reward our U.S. growers for growing long staple cotton. So it is a Delta Pine Select variety. The one thing being the class of 16, it is a Bolgar II variety, which brings us into what we're transitioning into now. So with the, the advance of the class of 18, we came out or introduced Bolgard 3 traits to the market. Class of 18, going into uh, 2021, we'll still have two varieties, 1840 and 1851. Tell us a little bit about those two varieties and where they'll have a fit here in the Carolinas. Yeah, Josh, those two varieties have done really well for us here in the Carolinas. They've been a really good fit. 1851, that mid to full season maturity, guys like it because it's got great versatility. It can handle stress, some of our lighter soles, but it really hits a home run when you manage that thing well early and you put it on some good dirt, it'll really return yields there. It has really good fiber quality as well. 1840, you mentioned, is probably one we've, we've sold a lot here in the Carolinas just because it, it fits our soil so good. It's got really good stress tolerance, really good plant health. So we kind of position that thing on that tougher acre, and that's where it sees its best yields at. Kind of like this field we're standing here in Tarver, North Carolina, on a light sandy loam, 1840's really got a home on this sandy loam. It really does, Josh. We roll into the one variety that we had out of the class of 19. We've got a good number of those acres around planted. Look at some of those today, looking really good. Tell us a little bit about 1916 and where it has a fit. 1916 has done really well for us here in the Carolinas, especially we keep it on that productive acre, and that's its fit. It needs to be on that good acre. It's really easy to manage with PGRs, uh, responses to PGRs, so pretty easy to manage for on those really good productive acres. So when we look at something like, we were talking about 1840, 1851, now we're back at a 1916. I think it's worth stopping here to mention the, 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 the scale that our numbers run on and kind of defined uh, what that means. So when we say a 1851 or a 1916, 19 would be the class of release. So 1916, the year 19, 2019, and then the 16 defines the earliness. So the closer you get to zero, the earlier the cotton, 
the farther you go towards 60, the later the cotton. So 1916 would be a true early cotton. Is it that would, right, Zach? It would, and 1851 would be like we call it a mid to full, on the full side of mid to full. Zach Webb here, technical agronomist with the Coastal Plains of North Carolina. And I'm out here today with our local techn technology development rep, Malone Roseman. Uh, and Malone covers the Carolinas and Southeast Virginia. Malone, Delta Pine Cotton. Uh, we're looking for some great recommendations here on how we can tie that and get some money back on Bayer Plus Rewards program. Sure, Zach. Want to start off first with an infer application of vellum total for nematodes, and then an in-crop uh, over-the-top application of Roundup and Warrant for weed control, and then at defoliation time, come back with Finish and Genstar. This will bring you about $9 back for the Bear Plus Rewards program. That sounds great, Malone, especially when you're talking about the best germplasm in the cotton industry, and you get back $9 for using these products. Sounds like a winner to me. Um, and so if you want more information on Bear Plus Rewards program, reach out to your local FSR. Well, you know, Josh, um, we talked about 1646 a while ago and the bar it set. And the challenge our breeders have and our researchers have is when you get a variety like a 1646, you, you got to keep coming with things that'll beat it. And it's really hard to do that. So this year we launched, last year we launched a class of 20. And I think we found those varieties that'll, that'll do it. And what's so unique about this group is that there's not just one or two of them. All four that we launched here in the Carolinas and in Southeast Virginia have got that potential to be as good as or better than 1646. Yield, fiber quality, they bring it all. You know, and uh, we've got a range of maturities, and that's pretty unusual too. 2012 to 2055, it's a full range of maturities. And the other piece that's kind of in kind of unique is that they have very diverse backgrounds. And you really don't see that when you get a good launch together. A lot of times you'll have four or five varieties launched together, and they have similarities or some kind of genetic linkage. These do not. Gotcha. Well, let's talk a little bit about this class of 20 that's coming. I know there was limited seed supply out there this year, but hopefully everybody got a chance to look at some. It's in all of our market development plots, just like the one we're standing in here today. So if you did not get a chance to look at some on your farm, be sure to get up with your field sales representative and take a look at one of your local market development plots. So when we talk about the class of 20, we're talking about yield, we're talking about versatility, broad range of maturities. Let's start at the low end. We'll work to the high end. Tell us a little bit about 2012 and what excites you about that. Yeah, 2012 to me is that true early material variety that we look for here in the coastal plains of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Southeast Virginia. It's going to have a great fit. It's very versatile. Uh, it, it has got really good stress tolerance, especially for its material. A lot of times the early material variety doesn't have really great stress tolerance. 2012 does. So that's going to make it pretty versatile. But if you pin me in the corner and said, where is the best fit for 2012, it's going to be on that productive acre, that really good high-class acre where we see top-end yields come back. So we saw yields, even here in eastern North Carolina, up above four bales last year. We did. Our MPE growers uh, had several MPE growers who turned in yields above four bales of 2012 last year. A really impressive variety. It really is. And, and uh, the... A lot of times growers ask you, what does a variety remind you? What old, we don't compare it to old varieties. And if you, if, if you ask me that question about 2012, I would say phenotypically, it reminds me a lot of 0912. Mm -hmm. It bushes out, it blocks off really nicely, it lateral fruits nicely, and, and the, one, the one upside it has over 2012 other than yield is the fact that it has really good fiber quality. Outstanding fiber quality for Delta Pine 2012 for sure. You order yourself to take a look at it, especially if you're looking for an early cotton variety. This thing really showed off well last year. Looks really good, even under some stressful conditions this year we've had in the Carolinas. It is really standing out well. So, as we move on from that early 2012, move up in maturity just a little bit, let's talk about the versatility around Delta Pine 2020. Yeah, Josh, 2020 is what I call a true early mid, um, and you you hit the nail on the head with versatility there. We talked about 2012 having versatility. 2020 has probably got even more versatility than 2012 does. While it will do well on that productive acre, it also has some pretty daggum good stress tolerance. A little higher level of indeterminacy. Uh, it still blocks out very nicely, just like 2012. It's pretty easy to manage with PGRs. 
Uh, I really, I really like 2020 and the fact that it has that good defensive mechanism in, in it. But at the same time, it can bring back those, those, those top end yields. And again, we're looking at some outstanding fiber quality. When we introduced 2020, I think back to sitting at the MPE event last year and seeing that stability graph and how tight that stability graph was, just showing how stable of a variety across multiple yield environments Delta Pine 2020 is. So we talked about stability, we talked about early variety, we've talked about a versatile variety. Let's talk about yield because Delta Pine 2038, that is the story. Tell us about 2038. Yes, it is. Our, our growers last year in the MPE uh, really let us know that this thing was, was a, a, a racehorse yielder. And the guys really loved it. Um, it. It's a robust plant. It'll require some early season PGR. It has, has tremendous strength of terminal, which gives us some really good defensive traits as well. Um, this was the highest yielding MPE variety we had last year out yielding 1646 and, and pretty much everything else across the board. We're really excited about it. It's got a really broad fit throughout the cotton belt, but we really like what we saw out of it here in the coastal plains of the Carolinas and Southeast Virginia last year. And that maturity is about a mid, so it's gonna fit a lot of farms out there and be a pretty versatile variety for us as well. So when we talk about high winning yields, we got to go back to the class of 16, 1646, and the on-farm trials with Dr. Guy Collins where 1646 has dominated that trial since its inception. This year, 1646 will be paired up head to head with Delta Pine 2038. We really look forward to seeing how that comparison goes. Yeah, Josh, uh, Dr. Collins does a great job with his trials. We've been very fortunate in Delta Pine to, to have the highest yielder every year in those trials since the inception of the trials. And you mentioned 1646 has been very dominant every year it's been in there. It's been the highest yielder. So it's going to be great this year to see how 2038 compares to 1646 in our own form trials with the university. Let's go to the last of the class of 20 and talk about Delta Pine 2055. We've got a more full season variety here, but it still has a fit across the Carolinas. Uh, we saw a lot of success with the MPE growers from it last year. Really looking well, really looking good for us this year. Tell us a little bit about 2055. 20, 2055 is, is that cotton variety that a, that a cotton farmer can take and, and do a good job with early season management. And that thing's gonna give you, give you a great return on your investment. It'll reward you at the end of the season. Um, it has very strong strength of terminal. I gotta make sure we get in there around Match Head Square and get some, get some PGR mm -hmm. on this plant at some level to help set us up. It's very versatile. It has got outstanding top end yield potential but we got to manage this thing. It is a mid-full variety with strong term terminal growth. It's gonna have the same kind of premium fiber quality you're used to in 1646 with that extra long staple. And, uh, and it'll be great to see how this thing performs this year uh, in a very different kind of year. Absolutely, Will, Zach. So we've talked about a lot of different cotton. We've gone from the class of 16, which is the last bowl guard two that is still left in our lineup. We will have some of that volume going into 2021. For those of you that have uh, absolutely love 1646. It'll still be around for next year, so don't forget that. But once we get past that, I want to talk about everything being Bolgard 3. So our Bolgard 3 trait has strong is has held strong throughout the Carolinas. We're seeing really good performance out of that. But on top of the the, the Bolgard trait, extend flex. So we've got earlier on in the virtual field day and another uh, in the other video. Hopefully you've watched. We talked about the, the release of Extend Flex soybeans. Extend Flex has been around a little while in cotton, but it's worth mentioning. Extend Flex is what? Tell us about Extend Flex. Extend Zach. Flex is the opportunity not only not only to use Roundup, but Extend Max, the dicam our dicamera product, as well as a Liberty option as well. So it gives you guys a third option here to control those tough to control weeds. So true flexibility in controlling your weeds, Bolgard 3 protection. Uh, and just overall versatility of the Delta Pine brand in general. There's a lot more behind the name Delta Pine than people probably really know. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Ron. We are really excited about the class of 20 yep. and the upcoming class of 21, but the true excitement is behind what is actually in the Delta Pine brand itself. Right. And the things that go into building trust yep. behind that brand, you know, we've been providing germ tests for a number of years now for every lot of seed that goes out before there was any sort of testing program, mm -hmm. we've, we've always provided that information, cool germ and warm right, germ. Right. Um, extreme fiber quality, we've got Delta Pine Select now that highlights those 
specific hybrids that are known to have superior fiber quality to bring to the market and get these farmers uh, a, an extra premium. Yeah. Those are all solid things, Josh. Uh, but one thing that stands out in my mind when I hear the word Delta Pine and think about the brand is a program we started back in roughly 2009 called the New Product Evaluator, where we actually allow farmers, cotton farmers, to plant products that are yet to be on the market, one, way, one year away from commercialization, and they actually help evaluate it and have a say-so in what we bring to the market. That's right, Ron. So the, the class of 09, this program has been, or this evaluator program, has yep. been known for bringing out phenomenal varieties. We've right. actually missed some varieties on the first year and gone back and grabbed them on the second year. Yep. But you've got products like 0912 out of that first class that everybody yep. remembers. you got 13 Delta Pine 1321 that uh, processed the first perfect bale ever to be recorded. Yep. You know, things like that really yep. stick out from this new product evaluator program. And we actually let those farmers test these products on the right. farm, each and every one of them. Then they get together, we get, they give all the feedback to right. uh, people like Keelan Goldston who are making these big decisions on what's yep. coming. And next thing you know, we got some really good classes like class of 21 or class right. of 20, class of 21 uh, that are just staples. And you know, really the, 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 the watermark, the high watermark for what everybody else in the industry is shooting for in the cotton world. But there's no doubt about it. It's helped us get to where we are today with the Delta Pine brand. Boys, if it ain't Delta Pine, don't plant it.